This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to another video in our series on solving Euler problems with Python. We are, today we're looking at problem number 3 and I've already made a template file. Uh, at the top I've copied in the um, definition for problem 3 so that's the prime factors of a given number are 5, 7, 13 and 29. What is the largest prime factor of the number 600 gajillion 143? So today we're going to work on cracking that. Uh, I've imported math. I get a feeling that we'll be uh, needing that. Um, and there's uh, two functions here I want to use to uh, crack this particular puzzle, this particular challenge. And um, we'll, we'll get to these in a second. Uh, down here is the boilerplate code for um, running the um, the challenge, uh, the code written here uh, inside of our hosting application. And if you're not with the program, don't mind because we can run this file on its own as well. Uh, whenever you execute a file in uh, Python, it um, it automatically gets the name main. So if our name, if the name of whatever function this is put inside of is main, then we execute this little bit of code, which kicks off the run function, which in turn will kick off our prime factors function, and that will use the sieve of errors that um, We've uh, in a separate video um, I talked a bit about uh, how we can find prime factors, how we can test for primes and the limits concerns there. Um, and I might not have been completely honest, though the basis that we talked about there is mathematically sound. There are different ways, more efficient ways of uh, checking primes on a computer. Um, and the sieve of Aristotelians is one of those, um, henceforth called the sieve. Uh, and what the sieve is going to do, basically, is uh, going to list out all the, the numbers we're interested in, starting at 2, and then at 3, then at 4, and then at 5, and then at 6, etc. Then it's going to take that 2, and it's going to cross out any multiples of 2 it will find. So, uh, 3 is not a multiple of 2, so it's left alone, but 4 is crossed out. 6 is crossed out. Because they are all multiples of 2, we know that they cannot be primes. And then uh, when we're done with the number we uh, have given us an upper bound, when we have run all the way up to that number, uh, then we take the next prime, which is a 3, and then we start crossing off every multiple of 3. Now 6 already was crossed out, but 9, for example, is a multiple of 3 that's still uncrossed. Um, so there you are, uh, etc. So next time, the next number we will pick, we just look at whatever number on this list hasn't been crossed out yet. That's five in this case because four already got chopped so then we take a five and we run along the list crossing out every multiple of five which in this case would be ten but it already got hit it would be fifteen um, but that would already be crossed out by uh, the three so I guess twenty five is the first multiple we'll find of five that has not been uh, altered by any um, previous prime we ran through this algorithm so that's the sieve of Aristotelianus. We'll be looking at making that, and in fact, we'll start with that. So we'll get an upper number. Now we need a list of um, all the uh, candidates. In fact, this is a list, um, and it has a particular size. Um, what you will usually see in in uh, Chief implementations is that this is a list of booleans, so it's not a list of which we're actually going to delete items. That sort of a list would, that sort of manipulation of a list would be um, pretty uh, resource consuming and it would disturb the order and the order of things. The, 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 we re are really going to look at the order of things to find the place where a multiple of 3, a multiple of 5 actually is on the list. Um, so let's start this list off with, um, personally, I like to start it off with a case for 0, another case for 1, and then the default case for uh, 2, 
Now we need to extend this list all the way up to the upper bound that was given for this list. Um, and we can do that as follows. Um, uh, in fact, let's do it in two steps. We need a second list, uh, which is, and here is a fun a little bit of Python code. We are assuming that every number on the list is a prime until we tell it uh, otherwise. And whenever you um, create a list object, you can use this bit of syntax where you say um, it is this list times, and now you give it a size, and the resulting list will be um, uh, this list repeated n times. So let's see. Um, we want a list that runs all the way up to the upper bound. Uh, so that's all the way up to here. Um, but we and we want to account for the fact that we'll be bringing along a zero, uh, so that's one additional slot. And we want to compensate for the fact that we already filled in these two values for one and two. So there we have this. And now we can extend candidates. Dot extend the second list. We could have done this in one step, but uh, this just shows a bit better what's going on here. Uh, and then we want to uh, return candidates. There's a lot more code coming here, but it's um, good practice to test early and test often. Um, Let's not return candidates. In fact, let's let's do something I'm not much of a fan of, but we're in the debug phase. I like my functions to return things and not to print things, but in this case, it won't do that much harm because this is still going to be altered significantly. Um, and this would run indeed, but now we are only going to call uh, sieve at 20. Just to see that we get a list of 21 items, false, false, and then 19 trues. That's probably 21, right? Um, we can print out the length of our list too. It's 22. Is that all right? 20. Plus the additional zero. No, it's one too much. Got a lot of by one hour with this blend. Now it's twenty. that works. So now we have a, uh, a list of boolean values, true or false values, uh, of which the zero and the one spot are indicated as being not prime. Um, but we need to check for the rest. So we are going to set up a loop. From uh, zero all the way up to upper plus one, because we want to include the upper itself. Do the following: um, if our current candidate at position i is uh, false, we could also say if not candidate, but this is a bit more. Explicit a bit more, uh, it shows a bit more what's going on here. So we are taking uh, elements off this list one by one, starting at the low end and working our way up. And if it isn't prime, then we just want to skip doing anything with this item and moving on to the next. 
and if it is prime then we uh, would want to start a second loop I guess and this loop will check all the multiples that are of size i times i this um, i is um, both the index to our list and the um, the prime itself the numerical value of the prime and the first composite number that this prime is a factor of is in fact itself squared because every other item that is not itself squared will have a um, another prime factor that is smaller than itself and because we are running all the primes in incrementing order that would mean it already got kicked out of our list by a previous prime so there's that and this range will run all the way up to uh, our upper bound plus one again and our step size should be I itself and the number this candidate is now set to false uh, candidate at index multiple is false now we are going to return candidates uh, we will uh, set a temporary value that gets this list and then for uh, i in range yeah. then x plus 1 we are going to print uh, the index and whether or not this number is considered a prime. Index out of range. Index out of range. Alright. We don't need to plus one this particular bit. So let's see. 0, 1 are not prime, 2 is, 3 is, 4 is not, 5 is, 7 is, 9 is not a prime, so that's important. Yeah, this seems to check out. Okay, so now there's two things we can do. We can just um, uh, leave this list as is, or we can return the actual a list of numerical values, which are our primes, and that is what I prefer, so we are going to... Um, change this around a little bit um, we're going to create a second list uh, and I will show you a little trick um, this is a cool function in Python called enumerate, uh, which does as it says in the label, it enumerates over a given uh, list and every um, enumeration will yield two items, its index and its actual value. So uh, oftentimes you'll find yourself creating lists like, uh, like this, in fact this is a good example where we create a counter that is uh, that runs along every number we expect in this index range and then prints both items from it. Um, this statement already does that for us. So here is our index and here is the value of whatever we're going to do. Um, so here we are. Uh, let's... Uh, if p is true, then times.append the index. Because the index mirrors our numerical value. And then we turn primes 
Now if we call this x is now a list of only the uh, prime values and we are going to print that list 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and 19 works like a charm so now we have a list of prime numbers now we can check which of these are factors of a given number this code has done what we wanted um, this calls the prime factors function so that's what we are going to uh, create next though this argument is a bit big to start off testing with um, so we're gonna ignore n for the moment and we will take uh, the prime factors of let's pick a random number 33 why not so prime factors um, first thing we need um, uh, to find prime factors we need a limit and the limit is uh, in fact This bit we did discuss in the um, primer video on primes. So here we can um, uh, look through all, uh, we need all the primes up to this limit. And then we, can, we are going to check them one by one to see if they divide into our number n, uh, 33 that we're going to start with. So here we have a list of primes and this is uh, the result of the C for uh, our limit. It's not going to be very big in the case of I guess, but let's see what's on here just for the fun. We have an error. Oh, right. I forgot a little something, and that's that we need to seal this. We, um, this function expects this value to be an integer and Python as a language is flexible enough to allow anything. We could have put a string in here or a list or whatever. Um, that's not checked at um, design time, at, at coding time, but it is an error at runtime uh, because this, this particular line of code expects an integer here and it didn't get one. So this failed and this uh, resulted in this big old error here. Uh, so that's easily fixed by doing this, I believe. Let's test it. Yes. So the primes in our list to check if uh, what the prime factors of 33 are, are uh, in order 2, 3 and 5. Now I've put a uh, 1 on this list. Um, I've initialized it with 1. Um, 1 is technically not prime, but it is there because uh, this function uh, returns the maximum of whatever is on this list and if you test this on an empty list you will once again get an error. So the one is just there to prevent this error. We could have um, checked to see if this actually had a result and else print some error message. We could use a uh, uh, exception handling here um, but for now this is good enough, uh, especially because uh, later on you will see that we can make a number out of prime factors and if there's a 1 on your list and you start multiplying this by uh, whatever other prime factors we find then that one will obviously not influence whatever answer we get so for now it is well and good So uh, this little bit works, uh, now we are going to run over these for p in primes. Hmm. 
Um, we saw that we needed to um, divide whatever number was given to us as long as this prime divided into it cleanly. So there is the modulo instruction that does this for us. This um, does a division and shows if there is a remainder. If there is no remainder, that means that the division went well uh, is cleanly leaves an, uh, gives an integer result and therefore this prime fits into this number. So if it does, um, we want uh, to append this prime to the list of prime factors multiple times if it's uh, if this test succeeds multiple times and we want to lower n uh, we want to divide n by this prime value to get the uh, shouldn't talk and type at the same time we want to divide n by this uh, prime to test it again to see if this prime uh, is uh, is a factor of this number of multiple times and if it um, if it doesn't divide anymore if it if it never did uh, this this loop will trigger only if this condition is met so if it um, if it is never met or if it stops being uh, true at some point then this will fall out of this loop and it automatically pick the next prime on our list And here we can check if n is 1 at some point. Um, in fact, we can do this here. Let's see. Here would be a good spot. If n equals 1, then we want to break out of the loop. And here we want to check if n, in fact, is bigger than 1. Then we want to add n to the list because it has to be prime itself. So this now returns our prime factors and this prints the max. In fact, I want to... I don't want to do this yet. I want to just print the prime factors. And there we go. 3 and 11 are prime factors of 33. That seems right to me. Let's test another number, uh, 2026. 20, Two and thirteen, all right. And twenty-seven. Three times three makes nine. Times three makes twenty-seven. Yes, people, we seem to have our prime factors working. Um, now let's test it on a slightly bigger number. I saw there was a test case in the Euler description. We need a five, a seven, a thirteen, and twenty-nine. We have a 5, a 7, a 13, and a 29. All right. Ah. Seems like we can activate this code as intended. Everything is in order. We don't have extraneous prints littering our code anywhere. All right. What does this button do? That went very smoothly. So the biggest prime factor of this gigantic number would seem to be 6857. Let's see if Euler concurs. Yes, we seem to have a match. Alright, 
So there's oil problem three. We will be um, discussing handling primes and prime factors a lot in the coming challenges. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Also check out our uh, previous video where we look at more of the math involved here. And see you next time. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.